Welcome to this week's piece. Actually, this will not be this week's piece. This is just what it kind of looked like beforehand. I'm actually working on the piece on the left. So as you can see, we have quite a bit of failing finish. There are some issues with them that I will address later on. Kind of as I'm working on them, these little armrests, they just kept popping off. So I ended up having to reattach those, which is fine. And you can see that this piece has been done numerous times. There's old repair work. You can see old dowels and new dowel spots. They've got some screws in here, which wouldn't have been original to the piece. And I've actually found a few nails in it as well, so that's fun. Um, that's why I really like working on these old pieces, that people cared so much about them that they wanted to keep them around, that they just kind of kept, kept fixing them. And I think that's kind of beautiful. So I'm starting this piece off with my carbide scraper. This is the smaller one and it has um, multiple heads that you can take off to help you with like curves and small intricate areas. It's a really cool tool to have. Um, this is the easier of the two chairs and I should not have done this one first just because it took so long to get all the finish off this. And knowing how long this one took that I still have the carved one to do is, ooh, it's getting to me. So, anyways, like I said, I'm starting off with a carbide scraper. This chair does have a lot of flat areas on the arm sides right there, on the insides and the outsides. They're very flat, so I could actually do quite a bit of hand sanding and then also bust out the big guns and go in with my orbital and hit that. I will not be able to use my orbital on the other chair, which is, I mean, for obvious reasons, I won't be able to. But that means it's going to take a billion times as long. But that's fine. They're totally worth it. And once I get all this finish off and get everything going, it'll just make them easier next time to be able to refinish them when I go ahead and change everything out. So that's something that I'm trying to keep in mind as I'm working on it. Again, this has a lot of flat areas, so I just went ahead and did those with my orbital. This is the Festool. It is incredible. I know you guys have seen me working with it all because of that one oak shelf that I did that I was like, I have to upgrade. I'm so glad that I did. It just like deletes finish. So you can see here's another repair on that. There is quite a bit of Bondo on this chair. I was not expecting that much. I knew there was a little bit, but there is quite a bit more than what I was expecting. And they have it on the rocker, which did not make me super pumped, but that's okay. We're gonna work with it and we're, we're just going with things. And you can see a few nails in there. That little wood bar right there is not original to the piece. It is not the same wood. But again, I just think that's kind of cool that people were willing to take the time to make it fit in and keep it around. So I'm going to be doing the same. So for all the rest of this, I obviously have to hand sand just because it's so ornate and curved. I couldn't possibly go in with an electric sander for that part. However, if you guys remember a while ago, Vivor had sent me um, like their version of the Dremel. And man, that thing really saved my life on some of these pieces coming up. Now it's super high speed and kind of abrasive. You can get softer abrasives with it as well and you can go at a lower speed. But just know that if you're going to do something like that, it is going to take off some finish and a little bit of wood. So just be very, very careful if you plan on going that route. You'll see it here in a moment. But I really needed something in these areas. I could not imagine hand sanding all of these. It was just getting to be so much, trying to get everything off. So this thing made quick work of it. I'm really happy that I had it. And it's a brilliant tool. It does so many different things. And so I was just very very thankful so it took up all the stuff and i could go back in hand sanding and get out all the areas that this couldn't reach did i mention that this took forever
So obviously I had to go in and vacuum everything out. Um, the hand sanding creates quite a bit of dust. So the fabric had to be fully vacuumed. I tried to vacuum off all of the wood because we're going to go in with a wash here. And yes, I am going to do a wash on the fabric. Um, I know there's a ton of different ways to paint fabric. This is the way I'm doing it for this specific fabric. I wouldn't necessarily do it for every type of fabric, but here this is um, a very strong cotton fabric. I just wanted to show you a few other repairs that there were here. I just think they're so fun. So you got a splice of wood in there. This was a not so fun one, but see that crack there? There's actually a nail on the underside keeping that in place. <laughs> Yeah, they just nailed it. It's fine. <laughs> and then that there has a screw through it to keep it in place. Of course, more Bondo. Okay, so my tools for this, I have a very light colored taupe wash and my spray bottle and just a little Wooster brush. So I'm making sure the wood is wet first. I'm not looking to get a ton of color on the wood and the wash on the fabric is just going to be to tone back the blue for the next step so that it's not so dark. So this part wood wash super easy. I'm just getting it on and working in smaller sections and then I'm wiping it back with the cloth and it's good to go. I don't want anything crazy. I chose this color honestly because I wanted natural wood but because of all the Bondo on there I couldn't keep it fully natural. So I chose a color that I liked that would also kind of go with the Bondo. So I could go in a little heavier on the wash on those areas and you wouldn't be able to see it as vibrantly as it is without it. So that was just my goal here. And then as far as the wash goes, I am not getting this fabric saturated. I've seen really awful, horrible horror stories where people have like seen the inside of their um, pieces of furniture that they've painted where they've just been really soaking their fabric and there's like mold and mildew inside and that is just not great. So all I'm doing is keeping this damp enough to move my wash around and that is it. I'm not saturating it. You could see me working in very light coats and then I'll go back and do another coat once it's dry. I actually wait till it's dry before I do another coat. I do not want to keep adding more and more wetness onto the fabric. I want it to be able to fully dry between coats so that I don't have to worry about any of the icky stuff growing inside of it. At some point, I plan on reupholstering these chairs. I'm just not there right now, so this is what I'm doing instead. And before I go on to the next step, I'm going to take the Master Clear top coat. I'm doing that just over the wood, and that's going to protect the wood from the next part of the fabric. That way, if I get any of it on the wood, I can just wipe it back. It's completely sealed, and I'm not worried about it.
I'm going to do one more round of the wash. Again, I'm just doing this to lighten up the blue for the next step because I feel like the blue is just a bit too dark to go right in with the metallic that I'm going to be using. I had two colors in mind. I had either the Modern Masters Gray or the Rust-Oleum kind of like champagne metallic. I love them both. Um, I ended up going with the Rust-Oleum kind of champagne colored. I don't know. Things might change later on. But for right now, that's where I'm sitting at. I might. I don't know. You guys know I like to go back and forth a lot. But that's what's great about all this. It's all just paint. It's all just things that can be redone. And it doesn't hurt anything to just have something for a little bit and then change your mind. So there's always that. So I'm using this uh, dead flat on the back of this fabric just over the tape lines so that my paint does not fully bleed through. I do not want that to happen. So that's what I'm doing first and then laying down the champagne color and then peeling it back for stripes. So you can still see it's not perfectly crisp, but it's way better than what it would be. I have detail brush for the small amount of trim that was on this chair. The other more ornate carved chair has quite a bit more of this, so that one's going to take a bit longer. <laughs> and then this part was super easy, just having that roller and rolling it on. Of course, I still had to use a small brush to get into the inside sides going around all of like the ornate arm pieces, but it was really nice to just be able to roll this on the front area and this paint is full paint i didn't water it down i didn't anything i just made sure that it was on my roller and i did kind of use the tray a little bit to wipe some of it off so it wasn't going on super super heavy it was just going on really smooth and light and then if i needed to add an extra coat or half coat somewhere i could oh hi taryn here with elegant upgrades and we've got our finished piece of course, there should be two pieces, but uh, do you see all those carvings on the back of that one? I am really, <laughs> I'm putting it off. I don't know what I'm going to do. I didn't want to use stripper because of the fabric, obviously. Um, I feel like even taping it wouldn't be a secure enough something to prevent the stripper to get in there. And I just, that's not something that I want to deal with on fabric. So. I might try like some soda blasting or something like that. I don't know. Or I'm just gonna get down and dirty with some hand sanding, which I think is probably the way that it's gonna end up going. But we'll see. Anyways, I absolutely love how this turned out. Um, as you know, I'm keeping these ones because I could not love them more. I think they're absolutely stunning. I think the fabric was just a little bit too much for me in the blue. It looks a little too kind of psychedelic. Um, but this kind of softens it out a little, having the shimmery goodness. And it looks pretty muted here, but in person you can kind of see the, the shimmers to it and it's lovely. Um, I did it this way because I actually really like the dark wood, but for where I'm putting them right now, I think the lighter tones are going to look better. 
um, it's going to be a bit before I can actually use them and get them in. But and then also it helped me hide the all of the previous repairs. My you, you can still see them a bit, and that's fine with me. I you guys know I like to kind of appreciate the lives that these guys have lived um, in the past, so I'm fine with being able to see them. I just don't want them to be as stark as they were, kind of without the light wash. So I'm just. I just love them. And then um, when I'm ready for them to go dark and actually once I decide to reupholster them, which is kind of the route, but actually having them reupholstered will be an ordeal. And I'm just not ready for that yet. So I think this is a good in-between compromise. And it's lovely. I love it so much. The fabric is a little bit stiff, but that's fine. I'm not too worried about it. Um, and then it has, you know, the fun stripes on the back fun fun stripes and get it turned around for you so yeah just so cool I love it um, I was thinking about instead of leaving it blue I would do how I showed you the two colors the kind of um, steel gray one over the blue stripe there too and then I also thought instead of the champagne color the steel gray would have looked amazing I don't know I just I keep going back and forth because I just love all the things. I love too many things and it just gets to be a bit much sometimes. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you are inspired to do something with some of your old stuff just to, you know, zhuzh it a bit without getting rid of it or doing something completely crazy. This is a very neutral fun and it will go great with some other things that I have going. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.